Now, in portal vein thrombosis, remember, it is absolutely essential to know if you're dealing with bland versus malignant thrombus in patients with cirrhosis uh, and, of course, hepatocellular carcinoma or suspected hepatocellular carcinoma. This changes everything with regard to therapy. Uh, if the patients have malignant thrombus, they are no longer transplant candidates and it's a rather bad prognostic sign because it's very difficult to treat. It does not respond like the tumors themselves when these patients undergo IA chemotherapy. Um, Doppler typically should be applied when one sees a potential portal vein thrombosis, but it is extremely insensitive. In fact, a article a number of years ago actually um, found it was only about 25% uh, sensitive in identifying flow in um, malignant portal venous thrombosis. The published results um, on contrast ultrasound have been spectacular, maybe a little questionably too spectacular, but extremely good, um, with uh, one group reporting 98% accuracy versus CT, 68%. And do remember that the differentiation between benign and malignant, between benign or bland and malignant portal vein thrombosis can be very, very challenging on CT and MR. Um, in this case, they published a report showing that CT was only 68% accurate. Um, another actually showed 100% sensitivity and specificity. So again, a simple technique that can be extremely valuable that we use quite a lot in our practice. Um, you can see in this particular patient that there is a large thrombus within the anterior right portal vein. I don't think anybody would have to point out where the tumor thrombus is. You can see the immediate enhancement of the arteries. You can actually see the feeding artery traversing down through the portal vein into the malignant thrombus. This obviously is an extremely um, dramatic example. You can also see flow in the patent portion of the portal vein more inferiorly. This can be contrasted with uh, the image of a patient with bland thrombus, in which you obviously see no flow within the thrombus at all, uh, obviously a much better prognostic sign than that which was seen in the first patient. Um, when we do imaging of liver tumors, typically we perform with CT or MR, what we term multi-phase or three or four phase imaging. Um, the idea being that hepatocellular carcinomas um, will have intense enhancement in the arterial phase, generally said to be about 30 seconds after injection on CT, um, and then show what is termed washout in the later delayed phases, usually between 60 seconds and three to five minutes. Um, the theory behind washout, of course, is the fact that the blood flow to the hepatic uh, tumors to the hepatocellular carcinoma is typically derived from the artery, whereas the blood flow to the remaining liver is most of the time derived or largely derived from the portal vein. So you see intense arterial enhancement with hepatocellular carcinoma and uh, then you see washout where basically the flow goes into the tumor early it's intense and then it washes out before the remaining liver begins to enhance from portal venous flow. So that's a nice example there of um, arterial enhancement. Um, here you can see some static images. Uh, you can see um, that the uh, image on the left is at approximately only four seconds. So it's very, very rapid. Um, the image on the right is several seconds later. Um, and you can see that the entire image or the entire mass is more um, echogenic or more reflective than the surrounding liver. Um, this can be uh, contrasted with washout. Um, uh, the images, the ultrasound images on the left obviously show that this tumor is now less reflective or darker than the surrounding liver, again, because it has come in through the artery, it washes out quickly, and um, in usually around maybe 20 seconds to 60 seconds, although again, washout may be as delayed as three minutes, um, you'll see that the liver remains more enhanced than the mass itself. And again, this is 
considered to be diagnostic of hepatocellular carcinoma. Really, no other tumors will do this. And you can see the correlate there on CT. You can see that the remaining portions of the liver, uh, the non-tumorous portions of the liver remain enhanced, whereas the mass itself, same mass as shown on the ultrasound, is less dense. Um, one of the other things I mentioned that we do with contrast ultrasound is um, to look at the response of tumors to treatment, um, both with intraarterial chemotherapy and with um, RFA, radiofrequency ablation. Uh, successfully treated tumor is shown here. You can see an echogenic mass beneath the dome of the right lobe of the liver. Um, at 25 seconds post-enhancement, you can see that there is no flow within this tumor. Um, the devascularization of the tumor is much more important than size. These tumors don't tend to shrink that much uh, after successful treatment, so this is one of the ways that we monitor successive treatment. Um, this patient, of course, you can see quite differently. Uh, this following intraarterial chemotherapy um, shows a large area of persistent enhancement, very similar again to what's shown on the adjacent CT, um, telling us that this lesion is less than 50% successfully treated. Um, typically, these patients will go back and have another uh, treatment round with intraarterial chemotherapy, or in some cases when there is minimal amount of residual tumor, either no further treatment or potentially targeted treatment after contrast injection with an RFA to get the residual portions of the tumor. Turning our attention to benign masses, hemangiomas have very typical appearances on CT, MR, and also ultrasound. This patient you can see on the grayscale image has a very, very fatty liver. Um, in these patients, hemangiomas can be very difficult to diagnose definitively because with grayscale, or diagnose at all with grayscale, because they often show up as hypoechoic masses, therefore being indistinguishable from other lesions, including malignancies. Uh, again, the classic features are shown here in this patient following injection of contrast. Early on, you can see that there is this peripheral intense nodular enhancement. Um, in going to more delayed imaging in this particular patient, um, you can now see that this mass has essentially become isoechoic to the liver. Um, these findings are essentially diagnostic of a benign cavernous hemangioma. Peripheral fill-in early, uh, which is nodular in appearance, then complete fill-in as we progress to more delayed imaging. And again, the MR in this particular case is diagnostic in a very similar way. Um, you can see here on the T2 imaging, this is a fluid-filled structure, so it's very, very bright. Um, after injection of contrast, you can see that there is some peripheral enhancement, very similar to what we saw on the ultrasound. And then finally, on delayed imaging, almost the entirety of this lesion fills in with contrast. So very classic features of a cavernous hemangioma. Another form of hemangioma has been termed flash-filling hemangiomas. Um, these can be somewhat par uh, problematic, particularly in a patient such as this where there is cirrhosis and there's a high question of uh, hepatocellular carcinoma. Um, this was a relatively subtle lesion that was seen on CT as intensely enhancing. You can see here that there is a mass which we might not have picked up on ultrasound prospectively. It is echogenic, which is again typical of hemangiomas, but certainly may be seen with hepatocellular carcinomas. And the interesting thing about this is that again, these show up as intensely enhancing small masses on CT. But if you watch these and go frame by frame, you can see here on this frame on the left, nine seconds, you can see 10 seconds, you can see very similar features to what we saw on that last patient with a large hemangioma that in the initial seconds there is intense peripheral nodular enhancement and then over the ensuing couple of seconds, this is only 11 and then 13 seconds, so four seconds after those earlier images were shown, you can see that this thing again shows more nodular fill-in and eventually completely fills in, just as would happen with a larger mass, a uh, larger hemangioma, but this would never be visible on CT or MR because again, you only get a single sweep. 
Um, this is delayed imaging. Again, these things can be persistently um, echogenic or enhancing. Um, and again, typically you would expect washout if this were a hemangioma, but just some interesting features that I think you would never be able to see uh, with the non-real-time imaging of CT and MR. Um, this patient uh, has, again, a very intensely enhancing mass in the liver. Um, you can see that it's much more um, echogenic than the surrounding liver. Um, this is a persistently enhancing mass. And the interesting thing about this is if you look now in the delayed, you can see this is not washout. It's quite the opposite. You can actually see that this is more echogenic than the surrounding liver. So this is not typical of a... Um, hepatocellular carcinoma, and the two major things that would be in the differential would be either an adenoma or a focal nodular hyperplasia. Um, the interesting thing about focal nodular hyperplasia is that it, in some cases, does demonstrate this stellate or star-shaped pattern early on. Again, you can only see this if you review image by image of the real-time clip. You don't really, it's very difficult to see with your eye. Um, and in this particular case, you can see these branching vessels that are coming out of the central portion of the tumor. Again, very typical of a focal nodular hyperplasia. Also, an article uh, by Kim et al. described as, as typical of FNH centripetal filling versus in adenomas, there tends to be filling of the entire mass all at the same time.